Okay, workshop vlog number 18. It is the 1st of May. A uh, few updates. I have a few questions to answer and we have some bench dogs to give away. So without further ado, let's jump in and do it. Welcome back to the workshop. Now, like I said, this is workshop vlog number 18. It is the 1st of May, 2021. Um, I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet. I just had knee surgery yesterday. I'm still recovering from it. I'm still a little bit groggy from the anesthetic. So if I seem a little bit subdued during this, forgive me if I make mistakes. Well, that'll be normal. I always make mistakes. But if I make more mistakes, then you know the reason why. But uh, we have a few things to do in this one. I have a couple of questions that you guys sent me that I have to answer. I have a few new tools, a few t new things in the shop. I'll show you guys. I'll show you a little project I'm working on. And uh, we have those Souter bench dogs to give away with the mag magnets as well to lock the track on them. Pretty nice ones indeed. So without further ado, I think we'll do the questions and answers first or the Q&A section. And I'll try and keep it as short and sweet as I can because uh, yeah, I'm kind of hobbling around the place at the minute. So let's get in and answer some questions first off. Okay, let's get in and answer some questions. And I'm actually gonna put them crutches down because it's making it quite hard to fill them. I'll just hobble around. So we're gonna start with some questions from Patreons. And the very first one up is from Aaron Don. And Aaron says, uh, Hi John, since you've made a few guitars now, I take it you actually play guitar. Um, do you write your music to the intro? Uh, not really woodworking related, just curious. The music is class. I played guitar for 15 years and have contemplated making an acoustic many times, but it is so much more involved than the electric. I've uh, chickened out. Have you made one? So, uh, yeah. I do play a bit of guitar. I've just kind of noodle around on guitar. I'm not very good. Um, I can play a little bit of guitar, but uh, like I said, I'm just a noodler more than anything. Um, I didn't write the music to my intro. That's, um, there's a website called Place It, um, and they just have all that music on there, and they also have all the intros, and you can just make the intro yourself. Very, very easy to do, actually. If any of you guys are starting a YouTube channel, uh, just go to Place It, and they have all the templates there, and you can just get an intro together in seconds, literally. I think it's about 10 euros, something like that. So that's where that music actually came from. It was just on that website, and it's royalty-free music, so I didn't write it myself. And when it comes to the acoustic guitars, I've answered this question a good few times, I think. Um, I would love to make an acoustic guitar. I've not made one yet. I have built a good few electric guitars. Um, the acoustic guitars require a lot more jigs and a lot more tools, and uh, it's kind of a big investment to kind of go down that road. So I would definitely love to make one. It's definitely something I actually want to do, but I just haven't got around to it yet. So that's hopefully answers that question. Now, next question. Okay, next from another Patreon, and this is from Papa EPH and Crazy Mama. I love the name. Um, Hi John, have you ever considered using a cyclone separator with your dust extraction system? Well, yes, I have. I've been looking at one recently. I've been trying to make a decision. Actually, we'll go around a quick look and uh, I'll show you some of the issues that I have. Okay, so here's my dust extractor. I have waffled on about this thing um, way too much and you guys have seen it probably a hundred times before. Um, I have actually considered putting a cyclone separator here, but as you can see, I'm kind of caught for space. It's right at my door. And uh, the fact that this is a barrel type anyway, it's pretty easy to empty. Now, if I did put a cyclone and a separate barrel, it would protect the filters and give the filters um, a bit more longevity, I suppose. That's, that would be the one advantage. But what has stopped me so far is it's just pretty easy to empty this. It does fill pretty quickly as a downside of this, I suppose, especially with the planar thickness or when you're using that, it produces a lot of chippings. Um, maybe having a larger barrel here and a cyclone on top might be a good idea. It's definitely something I'm looking at. I just haven't got around to it yet because I'm not sure if it's gonna actually benefit me too much. The fact that this is already like a barrel type and it's pretty easy to empty. But um, yeah, it's answer your question, I suppose. Long answer, short or short answer, long, whatever. Uh, I have considered it. I have actually been recently looking at a few different options for dust extraction and uh, cyclone separators and actually combination units if I think about upgrading. But uh, I'll keep you guys posted. And actually, let me know in the comments what do you guys use, what do you recommend, what would you put here if you were me. Um, as always, I do value you guys' opinions as well. So uh, yeah, let me know. I am thinking about it, so hope that answers your question. Okay, next question from another Patreon. This one comes from Nick Wheeler. Now, it's actually raining outside, guys, so hopefully it's not interfering with the sound quality too much. But Nick writes, uh, Hi, John, hope you're well. Uh, you've inspired me to build a new workshop with my MFT system. Uh, I use a single 
garage as my workshop and the floor is nowhere near level or even, how would you suggest I build a straight and level frame without a straight surface to build upon? Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Uh, keep up the great work and many thanks. Well, thanks to you, Nick. And again, thanks to your support over on Patreon, my friend. It's very much appreciated. Well, you guys saw how I built this MFT table. I built it upside down because I have an extremely flat floor here and it's a good reference surface to build off. But Nick, if you're going to build your table, I suggest you get your 8x4 sheet, put that on the floor, level that up, and then build off that. That'll give you a nice flat reference surface to build from. Uh, I used one inch MDF to actually make my MFT top. So if you go down that road, it would be easier for you to actually take that eight by four sheet, put that on the floor and level that up. And uh, that will give you a reference surface then to build off. So that would be my advice there. Failing that then, it's just a case of building your frame, uh, standing on its feet from the ground up. And then it's just a case of using levels and it shouldn't be that difficult. But if you're looking for a reference surface, just use your top that you're going to use for your MFT table and let that be your reference surface and set it up on the ground. That's my advice there. Hopefully that helps you out, Nick. And again, thanks very much for the support, my friend. Okay, let's move over onto YouTube and I put some, the same thing out on the YouTube community section. Some of you guys had some questions for me, so let's rattle through these as quick as we can. So Sam Ricks asks, what's your favorite tool and your next purchase? Well. My favorite tool at the minute is this little uh, plow plane. I've been using this. Actually, I'll show you the project that I'm working on now. It's Matt Esley's um, hand tool box, which I've completely built with hand tools. It's probably the nicest thing I've made to date with hand tools. I'll give you guys a quick look around it. But I did a lot of the work on this box with this little plow plane. It's the Quang Sheng Lubin plow plane. Um, I just really enjoy using this every time I use it. Uh, for grooves, for rebates, all that kind of thing. It really works, it works very well. And it's so quiet and so efficient. And uh, it just makes using a router seem brutish and noisish and dust everywhere. So this at the minute is my most favorite tool to use. I just really get a kick out of using it. And uh, Workshop Heaven is where I actually bought that. And they're always out of stock. So uh, definitely keep your eye out for them. There's other manufacturers out there that make them. I see these pop up from time to time, second hand, very reasonably from uh, different manufacturers as well. So if you're looking for this, and again, a lot of questions actually about this little plane. Every time you guys see me use it in a video, you're asking me, what is it? It's a plow plane. And like I say, there's a bunch of different record make one. And there's a few other companies that make one. And they do pop up every now and again, very reasonably online. So keep an eye out for a plow plane, guys, if you're looking for one. And uh, yeah, at the minute, that's my favorite little tool. Now there was a second part to that question, which was, uh, what's your next purchase? Well, I bought a couple of tools. One of them is quite expensive. I'll show you that now in a minute. So it'll tie into a separate part of the video. So we'll answer that question now in a few minutes. But uh, Jake is up next. So Jake O'Donnell says, please do more wood turning videos. Fun fact, it's nearly a year since your last proper one. Well, it has been a long time since I've used my lathe. I'm dying to do something else on it again. I want to make some more lamps. I think I said that in the last workshop vlog. I just haven't got around to it. Things have been crazy at the minute. And I haven't got a chance to do a project on a lathe. So definitely do a lathe project coming up. I want to make another nice lamp. And so uh, I think we will do that. Okay, next question comes from Oz Sawdust Makers. And he says, uh, hey, Maka. Can I ask how the pandemic is affecting life in Ireland at the moment? Are you almost at the point where you can return to normal daily life? Also, based on your success of your channel, do you think about quitting being a sparky or working less hours so you can do more YouTube, e.g. drinking whiskey? Well, uh, the first part of that question is um, we're just coming out of total lockdown here in Ireland now. So we've been locked down for nearly a year. Uh, some things are beginning to open up again. So we're starting to see the benefit of the vaccine rollout and that kind of thing. And coming into the summertime as well, the virus is obviously less transmissible. It's not very, very transmissible outdoors. So they're letting us uh, outdoors again. And it's about time to really, I'll be honest. And uh, so things are beginning to open up again, not fully. Uh, restaurants and pubs and stuff are still closed, only outdoor dining and all that kind of stuff. So it's still, it's still relatively locked down here, not great. And the second part of that question, uh, based on the success of your channel, are you quitting being, thinking about, thinking about quitting being a spark? Um, not yet, definitely not yet. I think I spoke about this before. You would need about 500,000 views a month just to make a basic uh, average industrial wage on YouTube from the ad revenue. And because ad revenue is up and down so much, uh, it's very difficult to make a living. This is really just a hobby. And so long as the hobby pays for itself, that's all I'm really asking for. And if it brings in a few extra pound, happy days, I'm delighted with that. But trying to turn this into an actual living is unbelievably difficult. And uh, just to give you one example, March was a very, very good month because my planter video 
kind of exploded because it just came to that time of the year where everybody's out gardening and uh, it got me some load of subscribers and the ad revenue went right up. But this month, it has dropped by 70%. So there's a 70% drop in views, in ad revenue and everything. So if you're relying on it for your living, you just absolutely couldn't because it's up and down so much. And you kind of get a feeling that you're running on a treadmill and you gotta keep running and keep producing content. And then you kind of get captured by chasing money and you're not putting out the content and you're not making the things that you want to make. And if I'm not making what I want to make, then what's the point of me being in this workshop? So at the minute, my electrical business is flying it's going well so that pays the bills and uh, this is a nice little bonus so that's kind of what it is so no i've no intentions of quitting being a sparks just yet on yet unless i become a i don't know get a couple of million subscribers or something like that anyway on to the next question okay so next up uh, project rebuild uh, hi john i hope you're well what are the three top cons for a wooden shed workshop uh, what should we take into consideration when starting out in a shed workshop kind regards paul well uh, my last two videos i've been building a little playroom for my daughter from my garden shed that was my workshop and there's another smaller garden shed i have in my yard there that was my original workshop and uh, so i know all about timber sheds well, the first thing obviously about timber shed is it's made from timber so you got to look after it um, it can break down it can rot over time but as long as you keep up um, the maintenance on a timber shed you will get years you'll easily get 20 years out of it um, another thing is insulating it that's another con to it but you can do it pretty quickly and pretty cheap if you saw what i've done on the playhouse that stays lovely and warm now right into the night and uh, that insulation was relatively cheap and just osb on the walls Dampness can be a slight issue in them too. The roof, depending on what roof you have, if, if it's the mineral felt type roof, I've found that you only get six to seven years really out of that mineral felt before you have to replace it all. And it always cracks and goes where it's been folded over. So right at the edge of the roof, it'll go there first. So keep an eye on that. Uh, check your roof regularly because the only time you know it's gone is when dampness actually comes through into the inside and by that stage a bit of damage has been done and it's a nightmare to dry it out you have to strip off the roof you have to wait for some fine weather let it dry out and then refelt it so uh, yeah that's the cons i suppose taking care of the wood getting it insulated properly and uh, there's the roof as well depending on what kind of roof you have on your timber shed but other than that they're great um like i say they're relatively cheap and it's a good way to get a workshop and once you get it insulated and the walls sorted out then yeah they're, they can be lovely and cozy so um best look in your new workshop okay we've just two more questions to get through and uh, hopefully i don't sound too disjointed but like i said i'm still under the influence of the narcotics i was given yesterday for the operation so i'm a little bit hazy but next up uh, robert benedetti and robert says i'm in the us and lumber prices are stupid crazy for inferior products uh, are you experiencing the same well i've been paying attention to that guys you guys are getting a right hammering over in the states there with timber prices uh there's a whole um series of events that seem to have taken place with the forest fires with uh, some producers shutting down speculators getting involved in the market driving up the prices it seems to be a whole host of events have kind of hit all at the one time and yeah it's gone really crazy over here i believe there's going to be a jump i think they went up 15 percent it's not nearly as dramatic as a jump that you guys are experiencing over there but i think it's starting to put some pressure on our market as well so timber prices have jumped a small bit here but not nearly as bad as and uh, they are in the states and hopefully they start to come back down again because i feel sorry for anybody depending on this stuff for their living um, it's going to be quite tough it's going to put a lot of pressure on contractors there to build houses and stuff like that furniture makers everybody are going to be squeezed but uh, yeah hopefully it writes itself soon and uh, not too not as bad here but it is starting to go up i suppose that, that answers your question okay the last question and i actually get this one a lot as well this is from paul brennan and paul says hi john what advice uh, or tips could you give on starting a youtube channel it seems to be a very difficult platform to build and grow uh, I followed your recommendation to Air Workshop and uh, I thank you for that. But whereas Tommy appears to be a very knowledgeable guy, it appears from his sub sub subscriber numbers he's struggling to grow. Um, is grow helped by shoutouts, etc., uh, as I actually found your channel following a shoutout from Peter at New Brit Workshop? Thanks, Paul. Um, well, my first advice to starting a YouTube channel is just start it. If you're thinking about doing it, get out the camera and start and get something up and um, make sure it's something that's valuable to people i suppose that you're giving out some good information that's the only advice i give you but definitely if you're thinking about doing it just go do it get a camera start speaking to it 
and get some content up there. And uh, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Speaking to a camera is wholly unnatural the first time you do it. You'll be embarrassed, you'll be self-conscious. That's all perfectly normal. It took me hundreds of takes just to get the first sentence out of my mouth, which is why I always start my videos with uh, what's happening everyone, welcome back to the workshop, because that actually gets my mouth moving and the words seem to keep coming after I get that first sentence out. So little things that I help. Um, when it comes to growing the channel, that's just consistency and time. Um, Tommy is actually doing quite well over on Air Workshop. I mean, he's only on his fourth video, I believe, and he's got a couple of hundred subscribers already, so he's doing great. Shout outs absolutely do help. If another bigger YouTuber sees your stuff and recommends you, that will actually boost your, your um, subscriber count as well. But it takes time. Um, the only thing that separates anybody from success and those who don't succeed is consistency. And that's the hard slog and the grog when nobody's watching, nobody's listening, and you're still slogging away. It just takes being consistent and eventually it will grow. Um, it took me a year to get to a thousand subscribers. And in March, I got 10,000 subscribers in one month. So that is absolutely possible. But it's a hard slog to get there. I have over 200 videos up on my YouTube channel now or more. I had 50 or 60 or 70 videos before I got to a couple of thousand subscribers. I think the average um, um, channel that has 100,000 subscribers has over 800 videos. So you can see the hard work and slog. It's definitely not overhead success. It's just about being consistent, loving what you do, and uh, trying to get good information out of people, and your channel will grow. But you've got to stick with it. That's the secret. There's no other secret than that. Just stick with it and be consistent. So uh, hopefully that um, answers your question. Okay, so hopefully that answers some of your questions and you guys got some good information from that. Now, I'll give you a quick look at what I'm working on. This is Matt Esley's um, hand tool toolbox and I've completely built this with hand tools. I'm not actually filming this. I'm just kind of following along with Matt's actually new channel. He has a new channel called The Free Online Woodworking School where he's doing detailed videos. And I'm using this to practice my hand tool skills. And it's probably the nicest thing I've made to date purely with hand tools. And uh, yeah, it's coming out really, really nice. A couple of issues here and there. I'm about five, I think, to 10% off um, getting a really, really nice finish. Um, a few little things I still have to work on in practice, but I'm hoping to get to the stage where I can build some stuff to sell. And I wanna get stuff to that kind of level, to that really good quality. I think I'm, I'm about 90% of the way there. So let me give you a quick look around this box and uh, see what you guys think. You can let me know. Okay guys, so very briefly I'll take you through this project that I'm working on again. It's Matt Esley's uh, Hand Tool Toolbox. He has a complete build series on this on his free online woodworking school on his new YouTube channel. And I'm following along and like I said, I've completely built this with hand tools only. And uh, it's probably the nicest thing I've made to date. It turned out really well. So the skills are coming on, which is the main thing. But it's made from that spalted uh, maple that I had. So that water damaged maple that I got a really good price on. It had some lovely pattern in it. So I made it completely with that. And the, cr the grain is continuous the whole way around the box. So it turned out really nice. You can see all the kind of spalting in the lid here. And a kind of a purple line that runs through it as well. Just from the effects of the water. Uh, it's in the lid. It's in the base. I'll show you all that now in a second. But uh, yeah, it turned out really nice. So the stage I'm just after finishing was taking the lid off now this was extremely hairy and uh, stressful so the idea being you would leave the top dovetail six mil wider than all the rest of the dovetails then you would take the router with a six mil cutter and you run that with a fence around the top of the box and then you finish the cut off with a handsaw and uh, that was unbelievably stressful I do not like using routers they're not my favorite tool I have to say and uh, yeah, doing this was quite stressful because if the router slips, then all those hard days of work are for nothing. But luckily enough, it took a nice clean cut. I used the actual Milwaukee uh, battery router to do it. So it was nice, small, manageable to use. Then I just finished it off with the tenon saw, planed it down. So I got a nice fit with the lid. I have a small bit of damage in the back here, which I'll run it on camera. Uh, just the router skipped a little bit on one corner, but I should be able to repair that and it shouldn't be too bad. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. You can see the lid all in there really nice. Now again, everything was done with the um, little plow plane I showed you at the start of this video. So you can see the tongue and groove base in there. It's all that spotted maple. So all the tongue, all, all the groove, all the rebates in this box were all done with that um, little plow plane. I didn't use a router anywhere other than to cut the lid off. 
but uh, that was the only power tool that I've used on this box. So they mentioned all the timber by hand, cut everything by hand, and all the dovetails and everything are all hand cut as well. So uh, yeah, that one little tool, it's amazing the amount of work that you can do with it. So uh, yeah, that's the dovetail, or that's the hand tool toolbox. That's what I'm working on, on my spare time. Really happy with how it came out. And I think it's gonna be quite nice indeed. So I just have the tray left to make that sits in here. I have to put a lock on it and the hinges to go. And then I have to get another couple of coats of oil on it. But uh, I got a really nice finish. I got a new sander, it's quite expensive. I'll show you that now. But uh, yeah, a lot of money, let's have a look at that. Okay, so I've bought a new tool. Now I agonized over this for ages. I deliberated over this for a long time and uh, I wanted a good sander. I wanted a good finish sander, a palm sander. And uh, I splashed out, got a fest tool, and it wasn't an easy decision by, the, by any stretch of the imagination. It is quite expensive. It's a hell of a lot of money to pay for a sander. But uh, looking at all the options out there, I thought I'd spend a little bit extra and get uh, a good one. And uh, I'll actually do a separate video on this. I'll go through all the choices, all the various uh, sanders that I was looking at and why I ended up picking this one. But I'll give you a quick look at it. It's the ETS EC155, so it's the 150 mil pad. So that's the uh, six inch pad with the five mil stroke. And it's a nice palm sander. And I have to say, it is unbelievable to use. The finish I got on that box was just exceptional. I got a hundred free pads with it. So Festool Vinny, um, he's on uh, Instagram. He sorted me out with a hundred free pads. Uh, but the route or the sander itself was uh, shockingly expensive. They are extremely expensive tools, Festool, and uh, it's hard to justify spending that kind of money on it. But they do really work. They give a beautiful finish. And one of the things I was so impressed by was the dust uh, extraction, the dust collection. I gave a whole afternoon sanding that box, all the components of that box, and when I was done, there was not a speck of dust on this uh, workbench or on me, and that's worth its weight in gold, um, trying to keep the dust down in the workshop, especially when you're sanding, is unbelievably difficult, and if you can keep that fine dust out of the air, then uh, that's your health, and health is wealth. And I have to say, I was unbelievably impressed. I'll do a full video on this. I'll show you an operation. I'll do a, a dust collection test, so you guys can see just how good it is. But uh, yeah, it's a hell of a lot of money. It was a big, big decision to go out and buy this. Um, 600 euros is exactly what it cost. That's a shocking price to pay for a sander. But all my sanders up until that point have been in around 100 euro mark, so they've been relatively cheap. They've all broke and they've all had terrible dust collection. So, like I said, I'll do a full video on this one. I'll give you a look at it in operation. We'll go through more of why I purchased this one. I'll give you, uh, in that video, the other sanders that I was also looking at and why I finally decided on this one. And then you guys can see this in operation. It is silky smooth, there is no vibration you could sand with this all day it's nice to use one-handed but again that's all going to come up in the video that i'm going to do on this but yeah that answers a question earlier on of what tools are you going to buy next well i won't be buying a tool for a while after purchasing this one i probably won't be eating for a while after purchasing this one as well but uh, yeah that's a new tool i finally splashed out and got a fest tool and uh, it is a fantastic bit of kit but yeah, it's, it's very very hard to justify the money that they charge for these things but uh, the tools are exceptional that's all i can say about them Okay, so that's my new tool purchase. Uh, bought it, finally splashed out, got a fest tool. Again, that's gonna be a whole video on its own that I'll do for you guys shortly and I'll give you a good demonstration and an in-depth look at it. But now we have some uh, bench dogs to give away. So uh, Sailor Shop sent me some of these bench dogs to try out and they also sent me a set to give away to you guys. And uh, we have to pick a competition winner. I've been using these things, they're absolutely great, especially with the magnets, these, uh, extremely powerful magnets that go into the festival track. It's so easy just to click this thing onto the dogs and it really gets a great grip. And they're beautifully machined, like I said. And the fact that the top or the bottom is a slightly bit smaller than the other side. So one side is exactly 20 millimeters and then the other one's like a hundredth of a millimeter uh, uh, smaller. It just means if your table swells, you still get that lovely fit and you can lock them down with the eight mil knobs that come with them as well. So we have to give these away. We've two, a set comes with two large dogs, two small dogs and a set of the magnets so I have them here so like we just did with the last giveaway from Solar Shop I'll go inside to the house we'll go to the computer we'll hit the random common picker and we will get a winner let's go do that now oh yeah it's even hard to sit down okay I have this random common picker that I used for the last competition it seemed to work very well so we're going to use this again so just a case of enter the URL for the video get the YouTube comments Find all the ones where somebody said, I need bench dogs, and we will hit 
select random winner and we'll see who won these bench dogs. So I'll get you for a close up on this screen now and we'll do it. Okay guys, hopefully um, you can guys can see there. I'll get you a further close up of it in a second, but uh, we just paste in the URL. We'll filter duplicate users and we'll get the comments. Let's go. Okay, so we've 371 unique comments to pick from. Let's start a raffle. Best of luck everyone. And the winner is George Brill. He said, very cool, I need bench dogs, thanks. So there you go, George Brill. You just need to send me an email now, my friend, and uh, I'll give you a code word that you can add to the end of that comment that you left on the original video. I'll uh, just give me your details and I'll get those bench dogs in the post to you. Okay guys, so there's the close up of it. So you can see George Brill, uh, here's his comment. Very cool, I need bench dogs, thanks. Total number of names, 371. And there's today's date and the time, and I'm using commonpicker.com. So again, congratulations, George. There you go, guys. Okay, so there we go. Congratulations, George Brill. You are getting yourself a set of these Souter Shop bench dogs and those powerful magnets. Now again, be careful with these magnets. Don't do what I did and catch your finger with them. They are very strong. They will jump to meet each other. That's why you have all this uh, yellow warning stickers in German all over the box to uh, yeah to warn you not to do that. So just be careful with them when you're fitting them. Don't hold two of them together in between your fingers. Just give you that bit of warning. And uh, yeah, congratulations, George. Uh, you just need to email me now. I'll give you a little code word that you can put on to the end of that original comment so that I will know it is you that I'm talking to. And uh, yeah, I'll get these in the posty and get them wherever you are in the world. I shall get these shipped to you. Really nice little set of bench dogs. And it's just a way again of me giving back and saying thanks to you guys who continue to support this channel. So there you go, congratulations George. Okay guys, so I'm gonna leave it there for this workshop vlog and again, if I've seen a little bit out of sorts or a little bit disjointed or if I'm slurring my words or whatever like that during this uh, uh, vlog, I'm sorry, but I'm still under the influence as they say and I just had surgery yesterday. I probably shouldn't even be in here, but I wanted to get that giveaway done. I promised you guys I'd get it out this weekend. So there you go and again, once again, congratulations to George. Uh, you're gonna get yourself a nice set of silver bench dogs. So that's kind of it for now guys. Um, so upcoming videos, I obviously can't do much now until this heels so I'm going to do a few sit down videos a few tool reviews I'll give you guys a demonstration of this fest tool sander in action and again I'll explain all my reasons for buying it and try and justify to myself the money that I spent on this thing but uh, yeah that's going to be an upcoming video as well so that's it guys I'm going to get out of here now and as always thanks for the continued support for everybody over on Patreon thanks for all your comments and questions guys it is really appreciated so uh, if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you're new here think about subscribing as always and I'll have more giveaways coming up in the near future as well to try and get you guys uh, making and woodworking if I can that's the plan anyway so there you go guys I'm going to get out of here now I'm going to put my feet up I'm quite tired and uh, I'm quite exhausted I'm in a lot of pain I'm under the influence as they say so I'm going to get out of here now I shall talk to you next one take it easy